Hey, what's going on everyone? So this is probably my most requested mission um, since I started this page about a month and a half ago. Um, it's a survey firing chart and then more specifically diving into the registration mission. Alright, um, what you see here is my plotting board on the overhead screen and then I also have the data sheet and computer's record on the right hand side. Um, just to show you exactly how this all should look on paper. All right. So first and foremost, a surveyed firing chart. All right, that is the most accurate firing chart we have out of all three. All right, so I've already covered observed firing chart, modified observed firing chart, and now surveyed. Now the only difference between surveyed and modified is now our mortar and our target location are known to 10 meter accuracy. All right, we all know in order to obtain that 10 meters, we need at least an eight digit grid. All right, so an eight or a 10 digit grid and survey accuracy. Also with survey firing chart now, when we determine our vertical interval and our altitude correction, we're going to apply all corrections. All right, so like modified observe, um, if we had a vertical interval that was less Less than five zero, all right, we would not apply that altitude correction. But now with survey firing chart, we will apply all altitude corrections. All right, so if there is a change in altitude between you and the target, you are going to apply that correction. As you can see up on my board, all right, I already have my grid intersection and all of that laid out just for the simplicity of this video. So I have a grid intersection of 0, 1, and 5, 9. All right, as you can see also here on the top right of my data sheet, I already have my mortar fire position plotted up at that top with a altitude of 520. And I have my registration point 1 plotted with an elevation or altitude of 1070. Now, as you can see, it kind of looks sloppy down there. That is all my corrections I'm going to have throughout this mission. I've already plotted that just so I can save some time walking you through the proper procedures. All right, I have an azimuth or direction of fire of 3660. As you can tell from my data sheet with a mounting azimuth of 3650. All right, so that is my board setup for the survey firing chart. And once again, I know both my registration point and my mortar firing position are known to survey accuracy and they have eight digit grids. All right. So I'm doing a, a coordinated registration mission with my FO. And all this means is prior to us conducting this mission, we have coordinated where this registration point is going to be located. All right. So I have a grid of 9948. 5875 with an altitude, as I already said, of 1070. All right, now registration transfer limits. So I'm located here, I have a registration point. Let's say this is my target area, right? So some things to consider when you're selecting your registration point. You want it to be permanent or semi-permanent in nature, meaning this thing isn't just going to pick up and move away, it's there to stay, it's not going to be destroyed easily. All right, you want it to be horizontally and vertically in the center of your target area. All right, that way you can get the most amount of play with corrections inside your target area. And I'll explain how that looks once we start applying registration corrections. All right, so what are our transfer limits for registration? So we have 400 mils to the left and right of our gun target line. Now, based off of our registration point, we had 1,500 meters near and 1,500 meters far. Now, all this means is anything, so any follow-on mission after we conducted registration that falls within these 
400 mils to the left and right. MR 300 meters. We are going to apply our registration corrections. All right. Now, with that being said, I'll back up here just a little. Let's say I just got done firing a registration mission and now I'm on a follow on mission, right? I'm going to give an example of that target falling, let's say just north of our registration transfer limits. FO keeps adjusting us, keeps applying corrections, and now we are landing outside of our registration transfer limits. Because we started in and we started with registration corrections applied, we're going to end with those same corrections applied. All right, now the opposite. Let's say I started with a target outside of my transfer limits, and as I correct those rounds or those impacts, it moves into my transfer limits. I'm not going to just randomly start applying registration corrections because that is going to change the way that the round is impacting the ground. All right, so if you start with registration corrections applied, you're going to continue all the way through an admission with those same corrections applying. And then same thing, if you don't start with them and you move inside your transfer limits, you are not going to apply them. Continue through the mission until end of mission. All right. Now, like I said, this is a coordinated registration mission. So the FO already has everything that he needs. So like our old computer's record, right? This used to be our message to observer box. So we're going to tell him, hey, prepare to register our P1. All right, a good FO will just go ahead and send back his OT direction. All right, so in this case, we have an OT direction of 3,800. Our target description is registration point one. I'm going to move into my FTC order, and I'm going to figure out exactly how I want to prosecute this registration mission. All right, so my mortar to fire for effect will be section. I have number two gun as my mortar to adjust with one round HE quick when ready. All right, because I already found my direction of fire and all this previously, I can just go ahead and obtain my chart data. Now, if you're setting up survey firing chart and you just got done plotting your points, all you're going to do is parallel plot your registration point And your, so you can see down here in the bottom, here I'll zoom out just a little bit. Accidentally just turned it off, so I'll wait for it to reboot. But all you're going to do is rotate your azimuth disc to your mortar fire position as closest to you. Parallel plot your registration point, get that direction of fire, that azimuth, and then you can go ahead and um, superimpose your referred deflection scale. All right, so just like I did here, my mortar fire position, my registration point, 3660 is my direction of fire, superimpose that 3650. So I am already set to obtain my chart data. All right, so I have a chart deflection of 2790 in a chart range of 3150. Now I said that my registration point altitude was 1070 and I'm at 520. So if I compare those two, I'm going to have a vertical interval of 550. Now I'm increasing in altitude, so that's going to be a positive VI. Divide that by two, and I get an altitude correction of positive 275. Now I'm going to apply that altitude correction to every follow-on chart range from here on out. So if I 
a five, positive two, seven, five to my chart, my initial chart range of three, one, five, zero, I get a command range of three, four, two, five. Now I look into my tabular firing table. I'm using 300 series ammo for this mission. I figure out it's charge seven. I can go ahead and pull all my other information that I need. All right, so I already said my azimuth was, th was 3660. Angle T is 140, therefore it is not in effect. I have a max order of 1514 meters and time of flight of 35.2. All right, now moving into my initial fire command. I'm simply just dragging everything from my FGC order and filling it in in its respective location. So I have section firing HE quick, number two gun, one round, deflection 2790, charge seven, elevation 1013. Now remember this elevation comes from my command range because I applied my altitude correction to my chart range. All right, so don't get those two confused. Now, once I send those over to the gun, they can go ahead, hang and fire. And now I can go ahead and stand by at my OT direction. So I am, I'm indexed at my OT direction of 3800 on my plotting board here. I can go ahead and bring that altitude correction down a positive 275 because once again I'm applying this to every follow-on chart range. All right, so as I'm standing by, our observer comes back with a left 50, add 150. Now once again, I already have all this information plotted on my board just to save time for this video. I would simply just go left 50 and I would add 150 from my registration point. Once I'm done, I can go ahead and re-parallel plot. Obtain my chart deflection and my chart range. I have a chart deflection of 2799 and a chart range of 3300. Now my mortar to fire, my method of fire is not changing, so I can leave that blank. I don't have any deflection corrections yet, right? Because I'm still in my registration mission. So I'm just going to pull my chart deflection over and make that my command deflection of 2799. Now I'm applying my altitude correction of positive 275 to 3300 to get a command range of 3575. I don't have a charge change, so I can go ahead and leave my charge blank. My corresponding elevation of 3575 gives me an elevation of 0958. Once I pass those orders to the gun, I go ahead, hang and fire. Now, once again, I'm indexed at my OT direction of 3800. Our observer comes back over and says drop five zero. Now remember, for registration, I'm trying to break that 50 meter threshold. All right, I'm trying to get these rounds as accurate as possible. Therefore, I'm trying to break the 50 meters. So you're not going to get, like you typically would with any other mission, like a, a drop five zero fire for effect. All right, we're breaking that 50 meter threshold. So I'm indexed in my OT direction. I can go ahead, apply that drop five zero. Once again, I already have it, but it would be from that first correction that I made off my registration point. All right, and now I have a chart deflection of 2802 and a chart range of 3250. Now, once again, my mortar to fire, my method of fire is not changing because I'm still adjusting. 
and I can bring my chart deflection over to make it my command deflection of 2A02, applying my altitude correction to my chart range to get a command range of 3525. I get my corresponding elevation for that range of 0978. Pass those orders to the gun, they hang and fire. Once I'm done, I'm back at 3800 and I'm standing by. All right, so observer sends a add to five end of mission registration complete. That's all this is, end of mission, RC is registration complete. All right, now for this, I can just apply it just like I would with any other correction. All right, so I apply my positive for my add to five. I, now I can obtain my final chart deflection and my final chart range. All right, a registration is simply just a grid mission until you get to this point here. So once again, I'm going to pull my final chart deflection and my final chart range. All right, so I have a final chart deflection of 2801 and a final chart range of 3275. Now we're going to prepare to adjust our sheath. So we have two gun, hit data, right? Now we need to adjust everyone else. We have our deflection correction formula, right? So we could either do this after we adjust our sheath We'll say we have some time, so we're gonna go ahead and knock it out now. So you notice I have two different formulas here, right? If my initial chart deflection is larger, then my final chart deflection, I will have a right correction. If my initial chart deflection is smaller than my final chart deflection, then I will have a left correction. So I can go back to my computer's record, and I need to find my initial chart deflection. I have an initial chart deflection of 2790. Now what tends to help a lot of people out is if they have some sort of highlighter or matte pen or matte marker and just highlight or make a box around that initial chart deflection. All right, now I can go ahead and obtain my final chart deflection of 2801. Now once again, using that same color highlighter, matte marker, matte pen, you can make a box and highlight 2801, your final chart deflection. Now I'm going to apply those to our formula. So we set our final chart deflection as 2801, and our initial chart deflection was 2790. I can subtract the smaller from the larger, and that's going to give me 11. Now if you think about this, we have a little saying, right? Where did I start? Where did I end and how did I get there? I started with an initial chart deflection of 2790. I ended with a final chart deflection of 2801. So I had to add deflection, excuse me. I added deflection, dealing with deflection we have Lars. If I'm adding something, I'm going left in deflection. So I have a left correction of 11. 11 is the difference in mils between 2790 and 2801. Now I can go ahead and do the same thing for my range correction. Once again, I have two formulas here. If my initial chart range is larger than my final chart range, I'm going to have a negative range correction. Now, if I have an initial chart range that is smaller than my final chart range, I'm going to have a positive range correction. So for this, all we're trying to find is the range difference between our initial chart range and our final chart range. So our initial chart range was 3150. Now if you're following along with me, you can go ahead 
and get a different colored highlighter, matte marker, matte pen, and highlighter make a box around our initial chart range of 3150. Now with that same one that you just did with your initial chart range, go ahead and highlight your final chart range of 3275 or make a box around it with your same color. I can apply those two to the formula. We know our initial chart range is smaller than our final chart range. I can go ahead and plug these numbers in. So final chart range of 3275, my initial chart range of 3150, which is going to give me a positive 125 for my range correction. Now remember this 125 is just the range difference between my initial chart range and my final chart range. All right. So once again, where did I start? 3150. Where did I end? 3275. How did I get there? I increased or I added 125 meters. All right, and then lastly, this is the last thing, the last formula we need to apply for a registration mission. And I'll explain how you apply all these later on. All right, so we know our initial chart range is 3150. We're going to round that to the nearest 100 and express it in 1000s. So if I round that to the nearest 100, I get 3200. I express that in thousands, I get 3.2. If you don't understand how to express something in thousands, just take that number and divide by 1000. All right, once we have this expressed in thousands, we're going to bring it down and we're going to pull our range correction of positive 125 and we're going to divide the 3.2 from that. And that is going to give us a sum of 39.06, 39.06. Now, because my range correction is a positive, my range correction factor is going to be a positive, my RCF. But we like to work in whole numbers, so I'm going to round that to the nearest whole number to get a positive 39 for my range correction factor. Now that I have this information, I can go ahead and fill it in on the bottom of my computer's record, just so I know for this registration mission, I have a deflection correction of left 11, I have a range correction factor of positive 39, and I have a range correction of positive 125. Now, range correction factor. All right, so we expressed it in thousands, right? So for every 1,000 meters within our registration transfer limits, we're going to have to apply, in this case, add 39 additional meters. All right, so for every 1,000 meters within our registration transfer limits, we're going to have to add an additional 39 meters to hit where we want to hit. And then same thing for every follow-on mission from here on out, we know we're going to apply a deflection correction of left 11. And then we will have to take our range correction factor and apply that to a follow on mission to get a new range correction for that specific mission. All right, this positive 125 is only for this registration mission. All right, so we get all that done. And now we are going to conduct a section right or a section left. All right, regardless, it does not matter. An easy way to remember this. All right, so for a section right, I'm starting with the right gun. So if you're looking at the guns, that would be one gun. If I'm firing a section left, I have my L for left, my first gun is going to be four gun. All right, so that's an easy way to remember who is firing when conducting a section left or a section right. All right, so for this, my method of fire is going to change because now I'm firing a section right, so my entire section is firing except for two gun. All right, two gun already has their hit data, so I'm going to say section right, one round, two gun do not fire. So I only want to fire one, three, and four gun. I'm going to give them two guns hit deflection of 2801. And
And now I have a new command range because I have to apply my altitude correction to this final chart range to get 3550. Once I do that, I get my corresponding elevation of 0968. And now I'm going to have three rounds fired, right? So I have one three and four gun firing one round. That's three rounds. So now I have a total round count of six rounds expended. Now, typically for this section right, you want to give about 10 seconds in between rounds a fire. That way you're allowing your FO to observe those impacts and make corrections. All right, so he observes our impacts and he comes back with one gun, left three zero, three gun, right one zero, and four guns adjusted. All right, so what this means is we have our mortar position, all right, represented by our hollow cross and our registration point represented by our blue hollow cross. All right, so our hollow cross is representing two gun. All right, so you have everyone else in the section laid out just like depicted. And then for a parallel sheaf, we want our impacts to impact the same distance as the spacing between our guns. All right, so we're using 81s, so then we know there's approximately 40 meters between our guns. So we give that section, section right, one round, two gun, do not fire, deflection 2801, elevation 0968. Now they go ahead and they fire one gun, three gun, and then four gun, and then our impacts, one gun, three gun, and four gun. Now, as you can tell, our parallel sheaf is a little bit off, right? So if two gun would have fired, they would have been right on our registration point. But he went and spotted these rounds at a left three zero for one gun, a right one zero for three gun, and four guns adjusted. All right, any adjustment of 50 meters or above must be refired. Now there's two different ways that you can apply those 50 meters or above corrections. All right, you can either just go back into your plotting board and apply it just like any other 5-0 correction, or you can go into your deflection conversion table and apply it to the corresponding range. All right? So, we need to figure out our data to get one gun on a parallel sheaf and three gun on a parallel sheaf. How we're going to do that is move into our deflection conversion table. So for one gun, he gave us a 30 correction, 3200. Now if we're dealing with the surveyed firing chart, all right, so registration, I'm entering my deflection conversion table in my initial chart data. My initial chart range was 3150. All right, our DCT operates in increments of 100, so I rounded that to the nearest 100 to get 3,200. All right, so initial chart range, because we know on our plotting board, no kidding to that surveyed location, our range was 3,150. All right, so rounded to the nearest 100, 3,200, and where those two link up is the number that I'm going to utilize and apply to get one gun's sheaf corrected deflection. All right, so left three zero at our range gives us 10. Now, because it's a left, we're using Lars, we're going to add 10 to two guns hit deflection. So his hit deflection was 2801. We add 10, we're going to get a deflection for one gun of 2811. Now that's going to be their sheaf corrected deflection. Same thing for three gun. We got a right one zero. We're still moving at 3200. Where those two link up will be the number we need to utilize to correct his deflection. So same thing, it's a right correction. Using Lars, we're subtracting this three to two guns hit deflection of 2801 to get a corrected sheaf deflection for three gun of 2798. Now, once we have this information, we can go ahead and fill it into our computer's record. 
All right, so we're gonna give one gun, do not fire, because their correction was less than 50. We're gonna give them their new corrected deflection of 2811. Now, same thing for three gun, less than 50, do not fire, with that corrected deflection of 2798. Now, four guns adjusted, so now our sheath is completely adjusted. So now we can tell them, section, refer your sights to two guns hit deflection of 2801 here. Now realign your aiming poles. All right, so all we did was get all of our cannons to look nice and neat on a parallel sheath, right? But then we had to correct their sight pictures to get them there. So now all we're doing is getting all the cannons on the same picture and correcting all of our sights to get on the same picture. So now everyone is going to refer to 2801. That's where they're going to have their sights on and then realign aiming posts. All right, so that is why we're conducting this refer realign. Now we come back with registration complete, sheaf adjusted. Registration complete, sheaf adjusted. So we have everything that we need for our registration mission. Now this is just showing exactly what we did to obtain our information, right? So for our deflection correction, everything for our registration is initial chart to final chart. Whether that's initial chart deflection, final chart deflection or initial chart range to final chart range, right? So we compare the two. All right, where did I start, where did I end, how did I get there? I added 11 mils, so I got a deflection correction of left 11. Now for my range correction, I'm comparing my initial chart range to my final chart range. All right, where did I start, where did I end, how did I get there? I added 125 meters so this is my range difference of 125 meters. It gives me a positive 125 range correction. All right, now I need to take that positive 125, divide it by my initial chart range, round of the nearest 100, expressed in thousands, so 3.2, and then that gives me my range correction factor of positive 3.9. All right, now that I have all this information, I can go ahead and move back into my data sheet and update it accordingly. So my initial chart deflection, remember this is an initial chart because it's a surveyed firing chart, we know exactly that is our hit data. So 2790, initial chart range of 3150, we had a deflection correction of left 11, and a range correction of positive 125. Our vertical interval, was positive 550, which gives us a positive 275 altitude correction. All right, now for our firing data. All right, this is the hit data that we had to take in order to actually achieve effects on target. So we had a final rate or a final deflection of 2801, a final range of 3550, charge seven. So remember this is our final command, and then final command range, all right? And then the, the corresponding elevation to this final uh, command range of 3550 is 0968. All right, for our intelligence, our target description was RP1, and our method of engagement was just two gun with one round HE. We had registration complete, sheep adjusted for our BDA, and we expended in total six HE. All right, if I have any questions over how to conduct a registration mission on the surveyed firing chart, like always, either comment on the YouTube channel or hit me up on the Instagram channel, and I will happily answer any questions that you might have.